Welcome to another episode of 9 to 5 Mac Weekly, where studio stock just went up. I'm your host, Miles Somerville, and if you're a fan of good ideas, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content like this. Today, Apple had their March 8th event where they revealed a new Mac desktop with the M1 Ultra chip, a new consumer display, and today we're gonna to be doing a breakdown and comparison of the new base model Mac Studio with M1 Max and see how it compares to the standard M1 Mac Mini. Mac Studio now sits alongside M1 Mac Mini as the two mini desktop PCs from Apple, so I thought it'd be interesting to see how they compare it to one another. Mac Studio's design is very clear close to the leak renders that dropped just a day before this event. It's under eight inches wide and three inches tall. And take a look at the ports on the front. We've got two USB-C ports alongside a UHS-2 SD card slot. And this is unprecedented for a mini Apple desktop and probably one of its most convenient features so far. The regular M1 mini obviously has no ports on the front as this isn't as professionally oriented as Mac Studio. But the overall look of Studio is pretty similar to the standard Mac mini. But in in addition to the new ports, the studio has an entirely new cooling solution. As you can see, we've got a bunch of these Mac Pro-like cheese grater holes that offer the cooling that this machine is gonna need. As you know, the Mac Mini only has that singular exhaust on the back for cooling, so the performance in that arena isn't quite up to par, but at the same time, the standard M1 chip doesn't really need the same kind of cooling that M1 Max and M1 Ultra do. When you compare the ports on these two machines, there's pretty much no comparison here, and it almost makes the Mac Mini with M1 look a little silly. The M1 Mini is rocking just two Thunderbolt ports with two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, gigabit ethernet, or can be spec to 10 gigabit ethernet, and a headphone jack. The Mac Studio, on the other hand, has two different port setups. The base model with M1 Max has those two 10 gigabit USB-C ports on the front alongside an SD card slot. And on the M1 Ultra version, these two ports are Thunderbolt enabled, giving the M1 Ultra version a total of six Thunderbolt ports, because you've got four Thunderbolt ports on the back alongside a 10 gigabit ethernet port as standard, two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, and a headphone jack. So if you need all the Thunderbolt ports you can get, the Mac Studio is definitely the better way to go. Now we get into the most interesting part of this device, the chipset. The base Mac Studio is rocking the base M1 Max chip that debuted in the MacBook Pros last fall. So it's got that 10 core CPU and 24 core GPU compared to the Mac Mini's eight core CPU and eight core GPU. The Studio's also got double the memory bandwidth with 400 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. So for both CPU and GPU performance, the studio is going to dominate the standard M1 chip for most intensive tasks. And then this Mac Studio can be equipped with the all new M1 Ultra chip, which at its lowest end comes with a 20 core CPU with a 48 core GPU and a 32 core neural engine. This M1 chip is essentially the M1 Max Duo chip we've heard many rumors about over like the past six months. The Ultra chip as described by Apple is essentially two M1 Max chips sandwiched together in a way that should make this chip significantly faster than M1 Max. And based off of the charts that Apple showed in the keynote, and while I do have to say, you kind of have to take those graphics with a grain of salt, uh, the performance this chip should offer in comparison to the standard M1 chip should be quite substantial. But yeah, if performance is your big concern, then the Mac Studio is probably the best Mac to buy right now, period, let alone versus the M1 Mac Mini. The M1 Mac Mini comes with eight gigabytes of unified memory and can only be specced with up to 16 gigabytes. And for everyday tasks like web browsing and consuming content, it's perfectly fine. But once you get into some more intensive editing and especially intensive multitasking, it can definitely become a problem. But Mac Studio comes with a minimum of 32 gigs of RAM and can be specced all the way up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, which is double what you can get on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. So that officially makes this Mac the highest memory capacity Apple Silicon Mac in existence so far. But of course you can only get the 128 gigabyte of RAM version with the Ultra chip. And then that brings us to the storage. The M1 Mac mini comes with a minimum of 256 gigabytes of storage and can be spec'd all the way up to two terabytes, which is reasonable, but obviously professionals could use more, especially videographers and photographers like myself who have to work with massive files on a consistent basis. And that's why Mac Studio comes with a minimum of 512 gigabytes of storage and can be spec'd all the way up to to a lovely eight terabytes for the mere price of 
$2,400. And at that point, looking into some external storage solution might make more financial sense, but it's there for those who need it. Price is where you're going to find the biggest gap between these two devices. Because the M1 Mini starts at only $700, while this new Mac Studio is gonna start at $2,000 for the M1 Max model. And there's plenty of trusted sites where you can get the M1 Mini for even cheaper than Apple sells it for. And I'll have some links down below if you wanna check that out. So Apple is clearly drawing a hard line in the sand with these price tags. And based on everything this studio offers for the price, it's obviously meant more for the professionals and creative crowd. We're not gonna know if this basically $4,000 price tag for Mac Studio with M1 Ultra is gonna be worth it till we get our hands on it, run some tests, some comparisons, some benchmarks, all that fun stuff to really find out if this M1 Ultra chip is all that Apple's hyping it up to be. But I gotta say the Mac Studio as a computer on its own pretty much checks every box that we wanted from this high-end Mac Mini. We always expected it to be a little bit bigger uh, and we're getting the higher memory capacity up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, which we've never been able to do in a Mac Mini type device before, even though this technically isn't a Mac Mini. We're getting the four Thunderbolt ports, well, technically six if you get the M1 Ultra version, uh, and then all the extra ports, 10 gigabit ethernet as standard, an SD card slot, and on the front, it, that that is something that was almost like a dream, you know? We've seen it many times before in concepts, but it wasn't something that we actually thought would show up. And I think it's really cool that we've got this now. The only thing that really surprises me is that this isn't gonna come in a space gray color option. I thought that'd be like a sure thing that we get a space gray color option as that's designated to the more pro-like machines. And we've got it obviously on the MacBook Pros, uh, the iMac Pro had it. So it's interesting. Apple's kind of getting inconsistent with their colors lately, but honestly, that's such a minor nitpick. And it's great that we can nitpick about things like this because it means that everything else as a whole is looking pretty good thus far. And I am sure as heck excited for it. So with the reveal of this Mac Studio, a lot of people who were expecting a lower end, more affordable Mac mini upgrade are kind of scratching their heads wondering what's gonna happen next when we're gonna see this machine. And now that we've had this event, I think the timeline is looking a lot clearer, especially with that Mac Pro name drop at the end. So I think what's gonna happen is I think by the fall, we'll probably have a fall event where we get an M2 MacBook Air, probably alongside an M2 MacBook Pro, and probably an M2 Mac Mini as well, because that's exactly what they did when they introduced the original M1 chips. And I think it'd make perfect sense to introduce these machines and they could all possibly have redesigns. I know there's been rumors as of late that the M2 MacBook Pro's design would stay the same, but I think it makes perfect sense that we could get three brand new redesigned M2 products at the end of the year uh, towards the fall, likely their fall event. The M1 Ultra variant starts at 30 $800, which is creeping up on iMac Pro and Mac Pro territory. So I think we can sure as heck expect some Mac Pro and iMac Pro killing performance. Not that M1 and M1 Pro and M1 Max haven't already done so in certain aspects. And it won't be too long before we find out as most of the early orders are going to arrive in the next 10 days. So if you're excited for that content, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this because we're going to be covering this new machine. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.